I'm, I'm just getting over a little bit of uh, laryngitis, so uh, I apologize with the scratchiness of my, my voice here. Um, my faith story. Um, well, I, you know, I, I grew up in a, in a Christian home. Um, I was churched. That's what I'd call myself. I was churched, maybe over-churched. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, no questions asked. Um, church took precedence over everything, over homework, over Super Bowls, um, even over watching the Dallas Cowboys, you know. Church was important. You know, and as a young person, I, I believed in God. I was taught the Bible at a young age, and, and I knew who Jesus was, and, and I believe in Jesus. I believe that he was who he says he was. Um, I believed in a place called hell. <laughs> in fact, the truth is I was, I was terrified of it. Um, when I was 12 years old, I, uh, I remember I, I, I went before my, my church congregation and I, I publicly confessed my faith in Jesus. I'd met with the, the, the preacher, the leader of our church before and kind of shared with him what my, my beliefs and my, my, you know, my faith was in and it was in Jesus. And I really did believe that Jesus was the Son of God and that the only way to be forgiven for my sins um, was to accept the gift of grace that he offered. So at 12, you know, I, I made that declaration of faith. I was baptized. I was saved. And, um, you know, for a short while after that, I, I did sort of have this sense of accomplishment or uh, satisfaction. You know, I, I knew I'd done what I needed to do. I knew what was expected of me. But I, I never really felt peace. In fact, I'd never really been counseled that, you know, peace and joy and hope were byproducts of our salvation. For me, it was more relief than anything else. Relief that I was saved from hell. You know, my perspective on God was, was, was kind of messed up. Um, you know, I, I pictured God as this old gray-haired guy sitting in a big chair behind a, a courtroom bench, really, uh, in heaven. And, uh, and, and he was just watching me waiting for me to screw up so he could smack me, you know? That was, that was my perspective of God. And I would lay, lay in bed at night wondering if I would really go to heaven if I died. I can remember laying in bed, praying and, and telling God that I was so sorry for all the junk I'd done, the bad things, because I really didn't want to go to hell. And even though I'd been taught and I knew in my mind that Jesus had atoned for my sins with his sacrifice on the cross, I really didn't have confidence in my heart. I didn't have what, what we call assurance of my salvation because no matter how much I tried to believe it, I really felt like I still had to stack up more good stuff than bad stuff in order to please God and, and to get to heaven. By the time I was in my, my teen years, um, the, the game was over really. I'd, I'd kind of given up. It was frustrating. Uh, trying to please God was difficult. Pleasing my parents was was even more difficult and um, you know so there was about a 10 year window from my mid teens into my mid 20s where I just completely turned my back on God and, and, and the church and anything of faith. Um, I began to try to convince myself that I was an atheist. Uh, I don't think I ever really truly convinced myself that that's what I believed but you know the more I said it um, the easier it, it became to kind of believe that I believed in nothing than it was to try to live up to what I really probably did believe in my heart. Um, and so that went on for a number of years. And in 1996, I moved to a new city in Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C. And, um, you know, after having lived a number of years um, touring, uh, working in, in professional theater, um, most of my relationships and people were um, with people in the arts. It was a very liberal community, a very liberal culture. And and it began to wear on me uh, emotionally and, and psychologically. And when I moved to this new town, I decided that I was going to make some new friends and they were going to be different. And I figured the best place to do that was like go to church and meet some good people. Because good people go to church. And if I went to church, I'd meet some good people and I'd have some good friends. So, you know, I started checking out churches in my, in my local community. And um, after going through a number of different churches, I, I, there was one that in particular where... I, I kind of stuck. It's called Bethany Community Church in Laurel, Maryland. And uh, I remember going in to Bethany and, and reading on the front of the bulletin uh, that they gave me that morning when I came in, um, helping people begin and grow in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Helping people begin and grow in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That was the motto of the church. 
at that moment, it was profound to me um, because I, I had never really understood that God wanted to have a personal relationship with me. It was always very corporate and very religious. And, uh, and this was new. It was different. This was new language. And so, you know, I plugged in at that church and, and I began to connect with some men who, who discipled me, uh, who helped me really begin to study out the Bible and, and learn about this relationship that God wanted to have with me. And, and, and they helped me to develop a more biblically accurate picture of who God is. You know, God is a judge and, and that is true and he is going to judge our lives. Um, but as much as God is a judge, he's also a loving father who wants to love us and have a relationship with us and care for us and nurture us and guide us. Sometimes that means correcting us. Um, but it just completely changed my world. It flipped everything upside down when I discovered this was the kind of relationship that God wanted to have to me, with me. You know, the, the, the picture in the, in the New Testament is that of the prodigal son. And as he runs home or as he comes home, his father sees him and runs to him. And God is a father that runs to those who are willing to come and repent to him. And that's an amazing picture to me. Um, anyway, I had been singing um, in the band at that church, the worship band, for a while. And I still remember after uh, one worship band rehearsal one night on a Thursday night, driving home um, in my car, pulling my car off the side of the road and having a conversation with God. And uh, I remember telling him that, you know, I was sorry that I'd been running and hiding from him all those years, you know. I had said that I believed in him and wanted to follow him, but my actions didn't, didn't you know, really reinforce that. I, I really didn't honor that commitment that I made. And so I confessed that to him and, and I asked him to forgive me. But most importantly at that moment, I pledged that, that from that moment and forever on that Jesus owned my life, um, that I was going to follow him. And uh, while many years before, you know, I had confessed my, my sin and I had proclaimed my faith in him, it was at that particular moment that I completely surrendered my life to Jesus Christ.